So I'm in uh, Yorktown, Virginia, where I grew up, uh, visiting my family this week, and uh, going to spend some time out in the garage with my dad, working on his uh, 40 Ford Coupe. And uh, look at his garage; it's uh, amazing how much you, uh, you know. I picked up a lot of skills from my dad, but the one thing I didn't pick up was how to keep your garage clean and organized and not cluttered. Look at all this space. He only has two project vehicles right now. I don't know how he manages with his two project vehicles. And then my brother's 69 Chevelle is back here. It's been a work in progress for a few years, kind of like some of mine, but he is a former body man and he wants this car to be perfect. And it is a part in ways that I have never seen a Chevelle apart, but he's got new everything for it. New floors, new rockers, I guess, because he's got the rockers off of it. The roof has been replaced on it, I believe. Is that right, Dad? No. No, the roof is the only thing left of it. Roof, left door, well, both doors, uh, roof, and the left fender, and that's it. That's the only original. <laughs> so everything else on this car is either new or from another vehicle. Even frames from another vehicle. So it's going to be really nice when it's done. And maybe I'll provide him some turbo V8 power for it. Let's so here's see. the original flathead and non-synchro three-speed from the 40. And here's the closed rear end. And uh, I think one of the first things Dad did was put a, a 10 bolt rear in it. And uh, boy, that didn't have much power. And uh, <clears throat> transmission was interesting to try to drive. So he put a 454 in it and uh, split the front wishbones, but he just couldn't get it low enough, and I think I have an image of it here. So here's what he's been working on lately. He uh, put a, a Mustang II type front end in it. It had the factory I-beam with disc brakes and split wishbones, but the steering ratio was really large, so it made 90 degree turns a little interesting, and um, the wishbones were hitting we were, they were need to be modified to get the car as low as he wanted it. So with this, he'll be able to get it a lot lower. Yeah, so one thirty second in each off. Okay. So Dad got this uh, Mustang II type front end uh, from a place that advertised in the Street Rider magazine. And the price was great, but he had some issues with getting it and some pieces missing and uh, wasn't real pleased with the... the uh, customer service but he did get his stuff and so right now what we're seeing is this rotor is dragging on the caliper and I recently had an issue with a vehicle that I went to help somebody pick up that the wheel bearings had been replaced but they didn't get the wheel bearings pressed in all the way and so after a little bit of driving it started flopping around so we're going to pull this rotor off real quick and make sure the wheel bearings are pressed in all the way. So getting your rotors off is super easy. Dad's already removed the caliper, which is just two bolts. Sometimes it's two clips. Usually it's two of something. And here we have a cotter pin and a lock to lock the spindle nut in place. <clears throat> okay, carter key comes off. Locking nut. outer wheel bearing and the inner one will be stay in there because it's held in place by the seal so we couldn't tell real well there's a it looks like it might be in all the way and it looks like it might not so dad's going to go ahead and pop this seal out so try to not destroy it but if he does they're like probably like three or four bucks from the auto parts store if we can find it <laughs> Kind of looks like it's not pressed in all the way. We're not sure. We'll do a little, a little more inspection here. 
So the bearings appear to be pressed in all the way, but there's a little boss right here on this mounting ear for the caliper mounting bracket. And uh, so we're just going to put it back together, and if the rubbing becomes an issue, this can be come down a bit to move the caliper over. For those of you who've never changed rotors, this nut here is what holds the uh, rotor on the spindle, and Dad's going to tighten it up here. You don't tighten these things super tight. You tighten them tight, turn it, and then loosen it. But we're just putting it on temporary right now. 